Good morning. Good morning. If you will please look on the back of your bulletin at the announcements, uh, please remember our uh, those who are sick, our shut-ins, and our uh, men and women in military. Uh, they would all appreciate a card or a telephone call, I'm sure. Birthdays this week are Sarah Kennedy on the 11th and Mabel Moses on the 12th. This week, we have Scouts on Tuesday, Choir Wednesday, Bible Study, which will be on the Book of James on Thursday, and Feeding Jesus, of course, next Saturday. Does anyone have any other announcements? David Blackman wants the USPPRC to meet uh, Thursday. We figure out what time it is. He wants to meet between 5 and 7. So, uh, and the finance committee needs to have a budget so we can get his appointment straightened up. Do we have to have... Uh, are those the only two that have to meet? No, all we need is get a budget for what, that he has for his uh, uh, next uh, pastor because you guys... Went, voted to go quarter time. Right. And you're not going to use the same budget that you had. Right. But administrative council doesn't have to meet before that? No. Okay. Okay. Finance and SPCR. Okay, if you will please stand for our birthday song. Our call to worship is Psalm 19, found on page 750. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. And then God has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like the bridegroom, leaving his chamber, and runs his course with joy like a strong man. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, every even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can understand one's own errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Also keep your servant from the insolent. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our hymn of praise this morning is He Lives, found on page 310.
Please join me in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, found on page 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. Our Old Testament scripture this morning comes from Psalms 133. It's found on page 550 in the Pew Bible. How very good and pleasant it is when kindreds live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountain of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessings, life forevermore. And from John, our gospel scripture, chapter 20, verses 24 through 31. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciple told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but they are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be Thanks to, to God. God. Thank you, Patricia. Happy Easter. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Before we get into joys and concerns, I have a story to tell. It's about a surgeon. The surgeon was meeting with the parents of a small boy. He started to explain how the procedure would go, and he said, tomorrow morning, I'll open up your heart. You'll find Jesus there, the boy said. The surgeon was somewhat annoyed, but he continued. I'll cut your heart open to see how much damage had been done. But when you open up my heart, you'll find Jesus there, the boy said. The surgeon looked at the parents who sat quietly. When I see how much damage has been done, I'll sew up your heart and your chest back up, and I'll plan what to do next. But you'll find Jesus in my heart. The Bible says that he lives there. The hymns all say he lives there. You'll find him in my heart. 
The surgeon had had enough. He said, I'll tell you what I'll find in your heart. I will find damaged muscle, low blood supply, and weakened vessels. And I'll find out if I can make you well. And again, the boy replied, and you'll find Jesus there too, because he lives there. Well, the surgeon left the room, and he sat in his office. He was recording his notes from the surgery. It was damaged aorta, damaged pulmonary vein, widespread muscle degeneration, no hope for a transplant, and no hope for a cure. The therapy would be painkillers and bed rest. Prognosis, here he paused, death within one year. He stopped the recorder, but there was still more to be said. Why, he asked aloud, why did you do this? You put him here. You put him in this pain, and you've cursed him to an early death. Why? And the Lord answered, and he told him, The boy, my lamb, was not meant for your flock for long, for he is a part of my flock and will be forever. Here in my flock he will feel no pain, and he will be comforted as you cannot imagine. His parents will one day be with him, and they will know peace, and my flock will continue to grow. But the surgeon's tears were hot, but his anger was even hotter. You created that boy, and you created that heart. He will be dead in months. Why? And the Lord answered, The boy, my lamb, shall return to my flock, for he has done his duty. I did not put my lamb with your flock to lose him, but to retrieve another lost lamb. The surgeon wept. And then later, as he was sitting beside the boy's bed, and the boy's parents were across, and the boy woke up and whispered, Did you cut open my heart? Yes, the surgeon said. So what did you find there? Asked the boy. I found Jesus, said the surgeon. I found Jesus. Could we wish that everyone in the world could find Jesus? But with heartache and pain all around us, it's easy to rely on self and rely on God and I'm thankful that there is people around such as yourselves who do that relying on God no matter what position we are in or what our health concerns are as long as God is in your heart you will survive and you will be good now that is my story the joy is we have a nice sunny day smiling faces and the other joys What about concerns? Vicki. Mm. Prayers for him. Anyone else? Hearing none, let's go to God. Lord, in all things, we do give you thanks. But as I've said time and time again, Lord, we're needy people. We need you in our hearts and our minds and our souls. We need you to heal us. The afflictions that we have and our diseases, we need those healed, Lord. But Lord, not only are we needy people, we're impatient people. We hate waiting on your timing, even though it's the best for us. Because of that impatience, sometimes we lose sight of what's most important in our lives that you always want the wells being for us to be the best that we could ever hope for if we have faith and trust in you. So with that faith and trust, Lord, I give you thanks. I ask that you look after those we've mentioned today, those we haven't mentioned that's in our hearts, and the ones, Lord, who need it the most. Special prayer request for Marshall, Lord, that you'll heal him and get him well again. And now, Lord, on this second Sunday in Easter and the thanks that we give for you for the risen Christ we pray the ultimate prayer by saying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now we get to hear our special music. As usual, our uh, plates, offering plates are in the back and on the side. So if you have not already offered your tithes and, and gifts, do that before you leave. And we will all be appreciated and help our budget. With that said, let us pray. Father, in all things, Lord, we are thankful the Lord... We're also in, 
limbo, not knowing what the future is going to be, not knowing if we prepared for it or not, and not always trusting you. Lord, give us strength, wisdom, and courage to, to do that. Trust you with our finances. Trust you to know that things will be the best for us, and trust you and things are bleak as that lady did when she gave everything and Jesus acknowledged that they still looked after her as you will look after us and Lord we do wish that you would bless these offerings and these tithes and for the betterment of your kingdom in Christ's name we pray Amen Amen if you would please stand for the doxology standing for our hymn of meditation on page 624 it's bread of the world seated our new testament scripture is from first john chapter one verses one and then goes to chapter two verse two hear now god's word we declare to you what was from the beginning what we have heard what we have seen with our eyes what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life this life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these down, writing these things, so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world the reading of god for the people of god thanks be to god
this is a tough way to go today. And I don't know if a church fight is actually the sermon title that you would think about. But there's no easy way to address conflict in the church. And the sermon title may be confusing to some because church should be alive with worship and praise for our risen Christ. But sadly, on this second Sunday of Easter, not everyone is in a festive mood. War is still raging in Gaza and Ukraine. Our government officials are arguing over petty things and not addressing the real issues that the people have. And NC State lost. The Methodist Church is still in a turmoil where Christians argue with one another. While this is happening, the church is an unhappy place. When outsiders look at what is transpiring, it casts a negative opinion of the church. When that is going on, the church forfeits the claims of the gospel of Jesus Christ as a reconciling reality for humanity. Alienation of people occurred. It could be the biggest reason that our pews are almost empty. People are not attending church because they have lost faith. Shortly after the death and resurrection of Jesus, this is what happened. Those who believed Jesus was a fulfillment of Israel's hopes disrupted the service in the synagogues. Their conviction clashed with the traditional Jewish belief. They were banished from the synagogues and formed a separate religious tradition. The church was born out of a bitter struggle from within the synagogue. And as we uh, started Bible study on James, he wants us to rejoice in times of turmoil because God uses those times to test our faith. The truth of Christ may be judged on how disruptive a life of a congregation is. John Wesley gathered his preachers annually to hear their reports of their work. And his first question they asked each other, one of them is, had they led anyone to Christ? And if they said no, his next question was, who did you make angry? Who did you make angry? Before Martin Luther nailed his 95 Thesis on the Wittenberg Church in Germany on October the 31st, in 1517, there have been disagreements in the interpretation of the Bible since then. And after that, even Dietrich Bonhoeffer disrupted the life of a German church when he, it opted for Hitler's agenda for the domination of Europe. Bonhoeffer joined with other minority German Christians who understood Hitler's goal for the church was to make it a baptism to plans for aggression against Europe and, and other nations, and especially Jews. Especially Jews. But thanks be to Bonhoeffer and his colleagues, they blessed the church and the world by an example of courage and gospel and powerful clarity about the claims of Christ. Something all of us need to do. Something all of us don't always do. And out of this painful moment, a disruption in the church, we have a godly gift. It agrees with our readings for today. That love and mercy of God often rides in on denominations in troubling times of conflict with our church. And witnesses applies to our traditions, to different dom denominations, our local congregations, not affiliated with the Methodists. Today's message should remind us that there has been conflict within the church for over 2,000 years. There have been 82 schisms in the Methodist organization, and we're still here. We're still here, proclaiming God's truth. This is something we always need to do, but unfortunately, as human beings, we will never totally agree with one another, but we can come to an understanding by focusing on what Jesus wants all of us to do. Our readings today emphasize that. Psalm 133 is a joyous occasion as the precious oil runs down Aaron's beard. It describes the joy and harmony among God's people. Then we have John 20 and 20, uh, chapter 20, verses 21 through 22. It's when Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into his disciples. What a joy that would have been to have seen there and and heard that and see their faces and what they had transpired because he said, go and do as I do. They were given the power to, to relieve sins from someone, and if the sins were always come back to them, to keep them, to 
to retain them. Something that we have joy in that today. And then we have 1 John 1, 17. John proclaims that God is love and life. And as long as we walk in the light of Jesus Christ, we will show the world a goodness and purity in the moral sense. As long as we do that. Jesus' disciples faced the challenge of creating communities unlike any that they had ever existed before. They accepted that challenge under a very harsh circumstance at threats of their life. Because that, back then, you had, they were struggling because after Jesus' death, they were all in a room, locked, scared to go out and do anything, afraid for their lives. Jesus had to come through a locked door and say, peace be with you and breathe the Holy Spirit upon him before it finally hit. And then, as we all know, doubting Thomas, but as Jesus said, praise be to those who do not see and still believe. Christ is the light of the world, and we can show that light and because it comes from us. People will know who you are by just the way you act. Jesus' disciples tried that too. Some were beheaded. Some were crucified, but they still kept on. And that is the reason why church continues today. We continue to find that Jesus Christ is the source of our own courage to keep building and sustaining our communities. And you guys, I've said it time and again, you do it well with feeding Jesus. You're sustaining your community. And it's getting noticed. It's getting noticed. So while we gather for communion, I want you to ponder upon these questions. Does the living God make a difference in your life? Does the living God make a difference in your life? Are you willing to testify to the risen Lord? Are you willing to live a Christian life with boldness within your community and with exalted joy of someone who knows their purpose in life is to glorify God? Would wish that we all could do that. And there's times... And I'll admit that there's times that I don't feel like being joyful and exalted. The way things weigh upon you and you dwell upon them instead of dwell upon God. And there's a lot of you in, sitting in here now that are the same way. There's times when you've doubted God. And we shouldn't, but we always do. But the thing about it is, if you'll stop and think about it, the more that you get to trust God, the more the faith that you have, the better your life will be. And also, the better you feel, the better you will feel. So let us pray. Lord, as we strive to do your will in this chaotic world, we ask for the courage and the wisdom to penetrate the thick skin of those who claim that they are not believers. We ask for signs as Thomas did so that they can believe. We still pray for world peace and hope that one day we will be witnesses of that peace. May our hearts and voices proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all we see. And may, Lord, we get that faith, that the mustard seed, and grow it into something like an acorn. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would turn into your handles to page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. 
And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Glory is in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night with which he gave himself up, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often you drink it in remembrance of me. And on the day that you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and juice and make these the, vim, the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're all one body. Bread broken is Christ's body broken for us. The blood of Christ shed for each one of us. Please come to the table as you're led.
rise now and go in God's peace. Let your light shine and know that he will always be there for you. Go in his peace. Take time to be holy. On page 395, please stand for our hymn of dedication.
enjoy the rest of this week. As you take your time, be what God wants us to be, his loving children. Your light will shine just as this light shines today. Through the darkness of this world, Christ will always, always come out ahead no matter what because darkness can't stand the light. You can do that. Just live the life that Christ wanted us to. Now, go in his peace of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.